So, we, 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 we know where he was sleeping in the overall office, huh? You know? Right, you know, so sometimes you gotta put on, you know, the smile and things like that, but it's okay to talk to somebody and say, you know what, we're, we're in dying need and we need some help because everybody has problems. We, 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 we know one president ain't gonna even go through that. Michelle Obama oh, look like she ain't even gonna take that, baby. <laughs> Michelle Obama, she ain't gonna take that. Right. She already know. She say, boy, let me tell you, fool. Right. Let me tell you, right, you know? Yeah, I, I think she would have definitely, you would have saw yeah. her emotions. That's that Chicago would've. flavor. She, she would have put yeah. it out there. And it's okay, you know, to be bothered. And we're all human, and we all go through things. And I think people appreciate humility, you know, to say, yeah, I've been there. You know, the song I sung, You Caught Me, that's right. a true story. You know, I dated a married man for a year. I had no idea. And I'm okay to talk about it, because I didn't... know I'm not the only but one. But you know what, let me ask you this. <laughs> when you can't go over his house, <laughs> Isn't that a clue? <laughs> it is, right? It's like, I'll be over there, baby. You coming by? Yeah, I'll be over there. Right. Because then after a while, it's like, we should be asking you, say, baby, you going to stop by? <laughs> so where did you get lost at in that? I actually could go over his house with no problems. With no problems. What, he had a mansion or something? Yeah. He's a millionaire, so you hit it. Oh, so he just took you to... <laughs> one of the other uh, houses. houses in the back. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I was one of them. I wasn't the main one, but yeah, I went to his house. That wasn't even the issue. God. Yeah. So after you went through it, that's when you came up with the book. Yeah, definitely. I was inspired. My producer actually was the one. He said, Lisa, you're very funny, and you need to channel that energy into something. And then I just thought about what I went through. And I actually, I got married at 18. My mother probably wasn't happy to hear really? that. Really? Yeah, I went You were like Janet Jackson, Vegas, huh? Vegas, yeah, did the whole thing. And um, I was really just faking a funk. Went through a lot in that relationship, and I didn't share well, anything I mean, with anybody, so. 18 years old, we just coming out of high school. Really getting out of mom's house. We don't, we think we know, we, we don't know. know. Yeah, young and dumb. We ain't know nothing about no light bill or gas bill. We thought we knew. We right. knew that mom and dad was paying a light bill or gas bill. <laughs> but 18 years old? Right. You know? So when is your book uh, coming out? In July. So over the summer, you can go to fakingthefunk.org and be able to, it's going to be an awesome book. And the website really? is really fun, too, because if you like games and stuff like that, the website has games. So you can actually go to the club, and you'll take a girl home. But when you get home, her hair may not be her hair. Or... <laughs> Or a guy, yeah, you well. might take him home, and you're going to find out surprises. So the website is really interactive. I'm excited about the website. But the book is, it's funny, it's inspirational, and um, it, it'll really help a lot of people, I believe. So uh, I, um, when you, let me, you, with your book, did you have to go find someone to, to help you write this? No. You I, just did everything. You I know, because some people hire their own author, and. Mm -hmm. I wrote it myself in my bedroom. Writing has always come easy to me. Like my album, I wrote 90% really? of the album. Only one song, Sleep When I Die, was written by somebody else. But he told my life story, so it was the words, me feeding them to him. But writing, I just love writing. No one else, just me. But I did interview couples, so it was their stories, and I just kind of, you know, embellish. That's what we do as writers. We make it creative, and we change some things to be able to protect the innocent. But I wrote everything. So before we, we close this out, um... So when you said it would help the couples. Mm -hmm. At the end of each in. chapter, I tell you some advice, you know, but at the end of it, I say, whatever you do, don't fake the funk. Life is precious. And tomorrow, the next minute, the next second is not guaranteed. And you know what? It's okay to say, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. You're just showing the other person that you acknowledge that you hurt them. And I think it's so hard for people to say that. But I just really want to put families back together, put couples back together, and marriages back together. And that's together. what we need. We do need I it. really appreciate you. Thank I you. I really appreciate, appreciate you, you coming out here sharing this and sharing it with my audience. Absolutely. You mean some Miss Lisa Lene? Yeah. so bad, I wake up in pain every day. I want to know why. I want to know why my hair is falling out. How did this happen? How did this happen? A little pain in my knee. That's how it started. That's how it started. 
this rash on my face, now it's like my body is attacking me. I want answers. When you don't have the right answers, it may be time to ask your doctor the right question. Could I have lupus? Thank you so much for coming back. My next guest, arranger, producer, conductor. You know what? I'm gonna just save all that. Put your hands together for my good friend, Mr. Charles Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Sidekick. Yes, man. I, you well, know what? A... I've been trying to get you on my show for the longest. Every time I look around, you're in Boston. I, I want y'all to know that this brother, when, we, when our president was doing his inauguration, it was this brother who you seen out there in the cold and handled all the music, wrote all the sheet music. Every artist that you've seen come up on that stage. Mr. Charles Floyd. Let, yeah. let me, uh, I'll just say uh, that it wasn't really <laughs> every artist and all, it wasn't all my responsibility. It was a gentleman by the name of Rob Mathis. Okay. Who had uh, the likes of Nathan East and other, you know, wonderful musicians who handled the folks with with the R and B, the Mary J. Blige and, okay. and, and and Beyonce, and then there was you know the James Taylor's folks. When it came time to do things like the national anthems and the and, and all of that, uh, the, the things that required orchestra, we realized, you know, we were going to have a 65, 70 piece orchestra, and a 14 piece ensemble. It took two people, so I was actually the assistant to them. To them. Okay. So, but I we just did give see credit where credit and is. And that's good. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. But you know, I didn't see him, but I seen you. <laughs> it was an honor. Did y'all see there. him? I, yeah, yeah. It was did an the honor culture, to yeah. be there. Yeah. I, I know yeah. it was. Yeah. And I see a lot of people really don't know what I do. You keep saying I'm always in Boston, and you know, you know well, one of the things I do is I try to hustle, to keep. Pay, keep the bills paid <laughs> for one thing. That's that, why. That's the first thing you do. That's why you haven't seen me that much. And in fact, um, uh, as as a, I, I, I do work with lots of orchestras as conductor. I'll right. Be, but you have Boston worked in the Pops. Boston. Yeah, right. Boston Pops. I'll be there June twelfth, and we've got some American Idol folks coming in, and it's uh, we've got a hundred voice gospel choir as well, and the program will also include classical music on top of it. But we've had Daryl Coley, we've had Marvin Winans, we've had Jennifer Holliday, we've had uh, uh, Patty and I mean, Edwin Hawkins. Right. And, uh, last year we had, uh, it, was the, it was the 50th, 40th anniversary of Oh Happy Day. And Edwin Hawkins reassembled the Edwin Hawkins Singers. And we, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. Three weeks from now, I'm going to Amsterdam to do a show <laughs> with the Holland Symphonia. It's all Motown and disco. Oh, really? So it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. But we were blessed. I grew up in Chicago like you did. It was gospel. You grew up, wait, what did you music, grow up right, um, Chicago. Okay, Southside, Southside, um, okay. And, and I didn't even know you were living out here until, you know. Right. Anyway, um, we were we were fortunate. We grew up with gospel music, uh -huh. you know, because you know our folks took us to church, right, all the time, and that turned into several days a week. And then when we thought we had enough of that, you go to school, you'd, you'd be in, you know, in some kind of ensemble, whether it was an R&B group or the band or whatever. And then pretty soon, somebody decided to start a gospel choir at school. So there was gospel music again. And then somebody was always playing some jazz somewhere. And then everybody kept saying, you have to study. You know, you have to keep your classical studies up. But you, you, you couldn't just slide by and do a little bit of this or a little bit of that. When you you when had you, to know your stuff. When you, when you st 